the Lord, even on your screen right now. And right, right now we're going to turn to the book of uh, uh, Matthew. Matthew, uh, let's turn to Matthew chapter 26. And then a few verses that we have here that uh, we're going to uh, read through. And uh, I want to keep to the word of God. I've got a lot of thoughts this morning. But I want to stick to the word of God this morning and give you that, uh, that thought this morning of what he did on a day like this today on Good Friday. And it says here on Matthew chapter 26 and verse 36, it says, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said uh, to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began uh, to be sorrowful. Look at that, troubled, sorrowful. Look at these words. Words are today. Today is a day of pain. Today is a day of suffering. Friday is the suffering day that our Lord went through. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, further he fell on his face to the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, may, it, may this cup be taken from me, yet not, not as I will, but as you will. This is the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he was taken by the soldiers. You know the story, the common story as he was taken by the soldiers and taken before the high priest of Caiaphas and uh, the incident that had taken place there. And here Caiaphas says, speaks to him, but Jesus remained silent. And the high priest said to him, I charge you under the oath by the living God, tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Yes, it, as you say, Jesus replied, but I say to you, to all of you, in the future, notice this, the promise that Jesus was bringing through, not only about himself, that in the future you will see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do you need any more witnesses? Look now, you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death. This is what was coming to him. Then uh, they answered, then they, then they spit in his face, struck him with, his fists, with their fists. Others slapped him and said, prophesy to us, Christ, who hit you? Then here in verse 27, chapter 27 of Matthew, and verse 27, then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered with the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. They twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff on his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail the king of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took off the staff and struck him on the head again and again. And after they had mocked him, they took off their robes and put his own clothes on him and they led him away to be crucified. Look at what the Lord had, had been going through and look at the last hour of his life. It says here, from the sixth hour until, in verse 45, until the ninth hour, Darkness came over the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in the loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is a day when our Lord uh, knows exactly what those who are going through, pain, whatever suffering you're going through, the Lord knows by saying, my God, my God, why have you have forsaken me? And look at verse 47, when some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and got the sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on the stick, and offered it off to Jesus to drink. And the rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes down to save him. When Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. This is the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. But let us pray this morning. Then we'll get into the word. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. And what you have done on Calvary, we have heard your word and the suffering that you went through, Lord Jesus. We know, Lord, that this is a day commemorating the pain and the suffering that you have gone through. But we come, Lord Jesus, and what can we learn from this suffering? What can we learn from the pain that we go through? The Fridays, the Saturdays, the Sundays, the everyday things that we go through, Lord. There is something and what we know of, of your word, Lord, that we can learn from, Lord Jesus. And today we're going to learn this morning 
Open our hearts, Lord, to receive your word. Anyone that is listening, that has not known your grace this morning, I pray that your word will hit them, Lord. Your word will be imparted in them. Lord, I pray that they will catch on to your word, Lord. Change them, transform them, Lord. Lord Jesus, and to accept you as Lord and Savior this morning. In your name we pray, amen and amen. And as you know this morning, that we're going through a time and hearing the story of pain and suffering Here's the word of God for us this morning. Never doubt in your time of pain. Let's say that together. Never doubt in your time of pain what God has revealed in your time of gain. Never doubt in your time of hardships, in your time of crisis, in your time of a storm, what God has revealed to you on a smooth sailing, on the time when you heard the word of God, when prophets came upon you, prophesied over your life, and said that you were going to be this. There are great things that are coming your way. You saw from far away how you walked that road. You could see the great plan that God has for you. You saw afar. Boy, this is going to be an awesome plan. But as soon as the storm came, as soon as the pain came upon your life, things started to muddle up. Things started to be confused in your mind. Things started to come in you, and you started to question things. But here's the word of the God for, for us in this morning, not only for you, but also for me, is never doubt in your time of pain what God has revealed in your time of gain. Can you say amen? Amen. Why? Because number one, Jesus understands your pain. Jesus understands your pain. He knows your pain, and he feels your pain. The Bible says here that not only he knows your pain, he feels your pain, but he was overwhelmed with pain and grief. He knows exactly what you're going through. Jesus is often referred to as a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Isaiah 53 verse 3 says that. And here, as much as Jesus suffered physically, his arrest, his torture, his crucifixion, his heart, his mind, and his emotional pain, we find that he was also thinking about the pain of others. He could see even in the verses that as he was hanging on that cross, he saw his mother. Can you imagine a mother standing there, seeing the first son, the firstborn, going through this, seeing his death, being crucified, hanging on a cross. He was speaking about his mother, and he says, Mother, there's your son. Son, there's your mother. It's like there's, in his mind, while he was going through pain, he was still thinking of us. Can you say amen? And never doubt in your time of pain what God has revealed in your time of gain. Why? Because he understands what you're going through. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 says here, I want to know Christ. This is the Apostle Paul, that I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and also participation in his sufferings that we have to go through this pain this life that you're going through you're going to go through pain it's a friday a saturday and also a sunday some of us want to just stick to the sunday of resurrection but forget about the pain but we can learn something here that there is pain that you're going to go through but don't worry because the lord knows what you're feeling even at this time the second thing that we have is jesus is connected in a time of pain uh, in those times that you're going through things Jesus, we find him connected with his disciples. And you'll find that in verse 36 of this uh, uh, same chapter, that as Jesus was going through, uh, uh, verse 26, it says here, Then Jesus went to his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he sat there. He, see, he went with his disciples. It's saying there, he went with his disciples, and he said, Sit here. Jesus is connected. He's showing us here that even him as the Lord God Almighty, he needs people at a time of hardships. He needs people at a time of pain. And he went with them to this place to pray. And it says in verse 37, he took Peter and the two sons along with him and he began to sorrowfully, uh, to, began to, sorrow, to be sorrowful and also troubled. Then verse 38 says this, then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. And look at that. He says, stay here and keep watch with me. So even the Lord Jesus Christ stayed connected. And even in our church, uh, uh, God is saying to us that we need to stay connected. Even at this time, it's a good time that coronavirus has come. I'm not saying that it should happen, but I'm saying even through this time, we can learn that in a time of pain, that we are connected with each other, staying together in the church. As a church, when you are in a physical pain, when you are in a chronic pain, when you are in a mental pain, when you are in an emotional pain, when you are in failure, enormous pain, embarrassment, whatever it may be, you tend to pull away. 
Some of us want to pull away. You want to stay isolated. But here we find Jesus wanting to connect. He wanted to be honest, even with himself. He's, he's not trying to uh, 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 be like, uh, hey, look, everything's all right. He is God Almighty. Of course, he could say, yeah, no, nah, everything's going to be all right. Everything's okay. No, no, he was honest with his feelings. He was right. He is, amen, I'm going through this. And even though with us, even as a church, we need to uh, take the example that Jesus stayed connected in this time of pain. And then he said to us, uh, uh, look at that uh, Galatians chapter uh, 6, verse 2. It says, carry, uh, look at that, carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. God is saying to his church that we need to carry each other's burdens and fulfilling this. I get worried when people who are not in the ladies' fellowship, uh, who are not connected in there. I get worried when people are not connected in the men's fellowship. I get worried when youth are not connected in the youth ministry that God has for us. I get worried when talented musicians are not connected in their time of prayers. I get worried when people are not here on Wednesday night pre prayer meetings because Christ was connected in his time of pain. It's a time where we need to come together, encourage one another, even in our time of pain. What is the Lord saying to us? Never doubt in that time of pain or that time of hardship what God has revealed to you. You need to stay connected. I need to stay connected. I need to fulfill those laws that God has uh, uh, for my life. I need you. You need me in the times of hardship. What is this laws that God talking about? Is loving the Lord your God with all your heart. Now, letting his love open your heart to him and let him love back to us. Now, in that same love, this is the law that Jesus Christ has, is to love thy neighbor, love the person next to you, reach out to a person in their time of hardships. Now, look at that. Not only he knows what you're going through, he also uh, connected in his time of pain. But look at number three, is that Jesus specializes in bringing the good out of the bad in your painful times. Jesus specializes in that. How many of us have walked away or deserted God because of their pain? Have you ever walked away from God when something didn't make sense in your life and you said, that's it, I'm not going to be here. I had the plan of being this. I had the plan of this. And you're seeing all these things put in place. And then all of a sudden, God just wipes it out and the whole thing just goes out the door. And you said, no, no, it didn't work my way. And I walked away from Jesus Christ. I walked away from church. I never came back. Well, my urge is for you this morning is that you need to get back into church. God is waiting for you. He loves you. Can you say amen? No, God loves you and he cares about you. And you need to know that God, that Jesus specializes in bringing the good out of the bad in your time of pain. He says in Mark chapter 14, verse 27, you will all fall away, Jesus said, for it is written that I will strike the shepherd. Look at that. He will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. He already knew ahead of time. He was already informing his disciples, this is what's going to happen. Well, uh, 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 not only all these things are going to happen, but here, look at this. Look at the good that he brings out, that he has good news for you. Look at John 16, verse 16. As Jesus said to them, in a little while, you will see me no more. But then after a little while, you will see me again. Jesus has got that promise that even in that bad, I know that you guys are going to desert me. I know that you're going to deny me, Peter, three times tonight, even as we speak. I know there is a is, is betrayal that's coming my way. I know all these things. But he says, but in a while that I will be back. And uh, look at that verse 20. It says, very truly, I tell you, you will weep and you will mourn while the world rejoices. And you will grieve, but your grief will be turned into joy. Let's say the word joy. Yeah, that's it. I can hear you. And uh, a woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish. You ladies know what this, this scripture is talking about. When you're having that child, uh, the, the, the labor pains, things like months and months and months of carrying that, that child in you. You're having all sorts of cravings, whatever it is. You know what I'm talking about. But as soon as you have that child, all this stuff is forgotten. Once you have that little child and you enjoy it, and the Lord gives us a promise that, yes, the best is coming for you. And so when you, and now is the time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice. The Lord specializes in it. 
The Lord knows what you're going through. The Lord specializes in bringing, even though your flaws or whatever it is that you have, He can turn that flaw, even though you walked away for so many years, you haven't come to church or whatever it is, He knows how to turn that uh, bad thing into a good thing. But let us turn back to Him because He's already made His promises and He knows Himself that He has this. He wasn't a martyr. The Lord Jesus Christ wasn't a martyr that someone struck him. No, no. He said himself that I will lay down my life. This was a mission that he was coming for. He was coming for, he knew this. Even the time when the soldiers came to him and arrested him and they were about to take him, Jesus said, uh, Peter jumps out with a sword, takes off the ear of one of the soldiers and uh, the Lord Jesus Christ places that ear back on and then turns to him and he says, I could have sent 12 legions right now of angels, but it's not about that. I have to do this. I have to lay down my life because he knows your pain. He knows your pain. He knows my pain. You may say, not only the physically that Jesus knows the physical pain, you know the crown of thorns that was placed on his head, the 39 lashes on his back hung on that tree. That's physical pain. And even the mental pain that he knows, but also the spiritual pain is even something that none of us have been through. We may all say, yes, okay, the physical pain, you got the, the mental pain, whatever other pain that you have, but the spiritual pain, can you imagine the sins of the whole entire world, of every murderer that's out there, of every child abuser that's out there, of every pedophile that's out there. Think of all these sins, the spiritual, but it took it all upon himself. Now that's some way that none of us have experienced that. But here Jesus says that he specializes in this. He knows your pain. He knows my pain. And he can turn it into something great. But let you not remember, not forget, Never doubt uh, 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 in your time of pain what God has revealed in your time of gain. Now, because you, it's something that we can learn of what the Lord has. Now, two important things that I want to bring to you this morning is one, uh, uh, one is knowing the promises of God in your time of pain. Uh, it's not uh, uh, easy to, to take a hold of those, but I, I want to encourage you to know those times in your times of pain that uh, know the promises, memorize that. Remember the word that God has for our church this year is to learn the word of God and return back to the, to, to the Lord. Even in your circumstances, learn the word of God. Know those promises. I was telling you one of my testimonies that even I sat down last year and, and I was confused one time and I was not knowing what was going to happen to me. You know, like even something that I was going through and I sat down and, and I saw that uh, picture that's on my wall uh, from my mom and, it, and it's got that Jeremiah 29 11 that I will never forget you know, to come, that I have the plans for you, a good plan for you, not to harm you, but to give you a future. Those words will always like, keep on locking in my heart and knowing the promises that God has the best for you. But we need to know the word of God. We need to know what God has for each and every one of us. Look at that Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 2. It says this, when you pass through the, the waters, I will be with you. God will be with you. He will be with me. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep you over. This is the Lord's promises. When you walk through the fire, it will not burn you. The blazes will not consume you. Why? Because the Lord, what? For I am the Lord your God, the holy God of Israel, your Savior. This is God's promises for us that he will be with us right through the whole time. And knowing his word. We need to know his word. We need to know that God has it for us. Jesus knew his word. He knew the promises. And he was saying that to Caiaphas, hey, you're going to see me coming on these clouds again. The word of God is going to come true on this. You're going to see it, the whole entire thing. I'm going to be resurrected. Jesus knew his word every single time. And that's the word of God for us so that when we're going through uh, uh, circumstances that there is no blank where there is doubt, where there is uh, uh, not any doubt, but also in our minds that we walk away from God, but we know his promises and we know that in it that God is going to be with us. Now, the last point that I want to bring to you this morning is not only know the promises of God, but to stay in the will of God in the times of pain. Stay in the will. One of the most hardest things that's easily able to deter us away. It's easy able to just make us come to church, but our focus is not on church. Now, and Jesus says here, he takes a little further, and even through his pain, it says he was overwhelmed with this pain, 
but God come through, but he come through and he had said to my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not thy will, but your will be done. Yeah. And let this will of God be done. He was pleading with God, can you take this? Is there any way to take this cup away from me? Is there any way to take this away? Can I do it another way? But here he says, let not thy will be but your will be done. God is telling his church that we need to stay in the will of God even through our time of pain. Uh, and one story that, that comes to mind, uh, even in my own life, that I went through this, when my father passed away, uh, uh, and I was in Fiji, yes, and, uh, and, and, and my home, I was ringing up home one time, and uh, while I was ringing up home, the, the, all of a sudden, like, it's unusual for my own household to, to even have a phone cut off. It's normally like it, it's ringing, but I rang home and I felt this sort of like, you know, that sort of cut where there's, it's, 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 it's like a triple uh, a beep and telling you that the phone has been cut. And in my mindset, straight away, stress was in my mind. I was thinking, that's it. I'm, 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 I'm going to walk away from this thing and I'm, you know, I'm not coming, I'm not going to continue with the calling of God. I knew back in 2001 that God was calling me for his will. But yet at this time, I was saying to myself, when dad passed away, that's it. The calling was over. Then I could see that things were crumbling down. Never in the history of even my living together with my folks, having their phone being cut off. Then in my mind, straight away, stress come in. And the, the first thing that come to me is, I'm going to get married. Uh, the second thing is start uh, working hard, build the family again. I want to pay those bills again. I want to get ahead of things. All these thoughts, it was like, that's it. This is exactly what I'm going to do. But yet, this was not the will of God. And still remember standing in that airport and about to come home on that flight to, to fly home. And the only thing that was in my mind, that's, this is the plan that I was going to do. It was worry and worry, anxiety all coming over. It's like I couldn't see God's plan anymore. But in, that, in the middle of that airport, I can still remember that even just like getting ready to, to board that flight, the, the superintendent of, of the islands come up to me and he said, Sila, what are you going to do this? Do after this, after schooling. Now you've finished this uh, 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 Fiji bachelor's. Now what are you going to do now? I said, I'm going home. I'm going to get married. I'm going to get my family together again. Start working hard. And whatever it is, I need to get my family back together. And you know what he said to me? And he goes, well, you don't do that. I want you to go to the Philippines. And then I was expecting, okay. And straight away, God was already in my mind. How, can, how in the world can I go to Philippines when I got this in my mind, you know, like, number one, I can't even get a fare to go back to New Zealand, let alone getting to the islands is the only place that I'm going to get. But even getting to New Zealand to start back to work, I don't even have a fare to go back to that. And he goes, I need you to do this. I was expecting him to give me some money to, to pay for this fare, but nothing, nothing against him. But this, this, was, this is what was going on in my mind. But so anyway, long story short, I continued to, to, to focus on that plan even though you could see that the whole family, I, I was worried, but I started not to focus on the family. I started to focus on the Lord. I started to remember, you know, even through that hardship, even through to remember in my time of pain what God revealed to me, that he was saying that the best is yet to come. Things are coming your way. I started to focus on that, not worry about the family bills, not worry about the telephone being cut off, not worried about anything, but just to walk. As soon as I got to the islands, one of my family members rang up from Australia and said, hey, Sela, you want to fly over for this temple dedication? Long story short, I got to, the, uh, uh, to Australia. Someone paid for that fear uh, from a family member. And from there, I started working in Australia and went to the Philippines from there. And I'll tell you, when I got to the Philippines, it was only $2,000. I'm only telling you this because God took me through this. And I know some of you are worried about things, about tomorrow, about your bills, about this and that. And you're worried about this. But you need to focus on the plan that God has for you because Jesus started, he stayed focused. He said, he said, God, Father, Abba, Father, if it's your will, take this cup away from me, but let it not be my will. Let it be your will. And being in the Philippines, never played rugby before. Long story short, at the end of it, I found a sponsor there and he was willing to pay 30,000 New Zealand dollars for all these fees. And I look back and I keep on contemplating day in, day out, you know, all of these things. I'm worried about this pain of losing a lost one, 
pain of this, but you could see the grace of God. And God keeps reminding me that he took me through this just to tell you on TV, just to tell those who are listening right now that even in your pain, stay in the will of God. Can you say amen? Uh, and I want to encourage you right now, even as you go through that, that and, and as we go through this whole entire uh, uh, thing, that we got to never forget no, never doubt, never doubt in your time of pain. Never doubt in your time of hardships what the Lord has revealed to, you, to us even in our hard times. Now I want to remind some of you because it's tonight as I was praying and I was going through my notes as I set this through, God put this word uh, through his church even this time in Revelation chapter 3. And it says, this is for some of you that are sitting there, some of you that have got a different level of spirituality. And this is to the angel of the church in Sardis. He said, write these things. These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. So he says, I know your deeds. Look at it. Hear it. Those who are listening right now, that you have a reputation of being alive. You and I have a reputation of being alive. But he says, but you are dead. Uh, you're dead right now. Some of you are dead right now. But God is saying in his word that you need to be alive. You have a reputation of being alive. But even in this time, some of you are dead. And he says here in verse 2, Wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of God. Our deeds are not complete yet. We are not at home yet. We are still going through this battle. And God is saying to some of us, we need to wake up. We need to strengthen ourselves. We need to get into the presence of God and start seeking the Lord. Can you say amen? Verse, verse 3 says here, remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Look at that. Remember what you have heard, what you have received. Every Bible study that we go through, what you have heard in Deuteronomy. Remember what God says, that you can go into that promised land, but don't even think that you're going to be hiding there. I'm going to know every single one of you. What is he saying? It's not a corporate relationship. It's an individual relationship. It's you and God. It's me and God. It's each and every one of us. And he says, obey it. And repent it. For if you, are, if you do not wake up, look at this. If you do not wake up, I will come like a thief. Look at this time that we are right now. Who knows if the Lord is coming so soon. But let this be a message for each and every one of us. It says that he's going to come like a thief. You don't know when God is going to come. But he says that he will come like a thief. But he is telling us to wake up, church. To be alive even at this time. Don't fall asleep. Don't look at that easy life that we're having here in Australia. Get on our knees. Let's start seeking the Lord. And you will not know at what time I will come to you. Now look at this. Yet you have a few people, a few people. There are some of you, sadists, who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. And it says here, he who overcomes will like them be blessed, be dressed in white. And I will never blot their names out of the book of life. Can you say amen? Don't even waste your time on things of this earth. Uh, our spirituality is really important. Uh, don't look at the things of this world and start being deterred. We need to stay focused. We need to be reminding ourselves, hey, we're going to overcome this. But it says, but, but, but we'll acknowledge the name. He who overcomes will, like them, be dressed in white, and I will never blot their name out of the book of life, but will acknowledge them before the Father in heaven and his angels. And it says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Lord, what the Spirit of the Lord has for his church, uh, says, for his, says to his church. Look at that church. I want to remind you this morning. You know, even as you go through this season, uh, it might not make sense to you. Some of us are bored at times. But never doubt in your mind in the time of pain uh, what God has revealed to you in your time of gain. Uh, let's be encouraged. Let's be strong. Let's encourage one another and learn what Jesus did. Stay connected. Uh, not only stay connected, he knows what you're going through. And he knows that he specializes in bringing the good out of the bad in that pain that you're in. But look at the two things that I brought to you this morning. That not only you stay in the will, make sure that last two things that I brought to you, stay in the will of God even in the time of pain. And what is, what is the other one that he has? Not only stay in the will of God, but also know his promises in Jesus' name. Let's pray this morning and let's commit this time to Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, we just lift up your holy name, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight, Lord, this morning. Lord, and as we uh, remember the pain that our Lord Jesus Christ went through, Lord, it wasn't easy. 
It wasn't easy what he did on the cross. Even Lord Jesus, the crown of thorns on your head, the 39 lashes. And Lord Jesus, Father, even us gambling over your clothes day in, day out. Things that we do, Lord Jesus, without even realizing. Lord, the syrup of vinegar in your mouth, Lord Jesus. Hands and feet nailed to that cross, Lord Jesus. Lord, pierced on the side. All because you thought about every single one of us, Lord. And Lord, we commit to you right now, Lord Jesus. Anybody, Lord, that is out there, that is listening to this message, that has walked away from you, Lord Jesus. We pray that they will wake up and come to you, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord, that they will have a relationship because your word says that you stand at the door knocking on every single heart this morning, Lord. And pray, Lord Jesus, even our hearts this morning, renew our relationship with you, Lord. Transform us, Lord, to be more like you, Lord Jesus. Not only our mindset, but the whole entire being to walk towards your will, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you bless every person in the house of prayer, Lord. Use them for your glory, Lord Jesus. Lord, right from the youngest to the oldest, Lord God. And Lord, we commit this nation to you again and again. Pray for Prime Minister Scott Morrison. Again, we lift up our Prime Minister to you, Lord. And also the cabinet and those who are in leadership, Lord Jesus. All the pastors throughout this whole nation, Lord. Lord, we pray that they will speak the word of truth, Lord. And uplift, encourage their church members. In your name, we give you praise. And everybody say, Amen and Amen and Amen. God bless you. See you all on Sunday. In Jesus' name.